This pair of cold calls dates from a few years ago, so there is a topical reference that is no longer topical. I'm including them in this series because they demonstrate how some salespeople talk to those they believe are elderly. This company ignored the fact my number is registered with the Telephone Preference Service and addressed me by one of my made-up names, which means it is using a questionable contact list. Hello? Hello, can I speak to you, please? Yes, speaking. The saleswoman says she is phoning from a specific legal company. But legal companies tend to be rather unhappy about being mentioned in YouTube videos. I know that from the videos I made about the companies that phone you for uh, car insurance injury claims. Also, the sales pitch is so outrageous that I'm not entirely sure whether she actually works for the company she mentions, or if it is a case of the company being cloned. You know, one of those situations where criminals steal the name of a legitimate company and misrepresent themselves as working for it. For that reason, I have deleted references to the company name. I've also removed the numerous times these people use my made-up name. How are you today? Uh, I'm alright, thank you. Fantastic. Just a really quick call. This call is all about how the government can and will use your house as a means to pay for social care in later life. Right. The saleswoman immediately launches into a threat about what the government can and will do. As what she states isn't definitely going to happen, the major responds to this approach with some tomfoolery. Well, I, I, uh, I don't want anyone using my house. Okay. So, um, you don't, you don't agree with it, do you? Well, well, I don't know anything about it. Okay. So, are you a homeowner yourself? Well, yes, it's my house. You know, I don't want that Boris Johnson moving in, doing press-ups everywhere. OK, yeah, I know, he's doing a lot of that, hasn't he? Uh, so, uh, so, do you have a will written out for yourself? Uh, yes. OK, that's fantastic. I'm leaving everything to Benji. Who's Benji? My spaniel. Oh, OK. The Major has just said he's leaving everything to his dog. The saleswoman should really have ended the call here. Do, do you not have children then? Uh, well, I might have one or two knocking around the place. Oh, okay. So you've got a will written out. That's fantastic. However, with regards to will, it does only come into force after you pass away. Well, yes. I wouldn't want it to come into force before I pass away. Yeah. So there are documents you can put in place for yourself whilst you're alive case you did ever go to a car home and you had to sell your property. There are documents you can put in place so you wouldn't have to sell your property. Are you aware of things you can put in place for yourself? No. Okay. So, we specialise in legal documents you can put in place for yourself. These documents actually work alongside the world. It doesn't actually protect any, it doesn't actually protect you while you're alive. So, if you did ever go to a car home, once these documents are in place, the government can't use your property to fund your car. Right. So, I can get someone to give you a call and go through everything with you. Uh, the saleswoman may be talking about a trust, which is a facility that can be used to contain assets such as property and shares. Supposedly, if the Major moved his house into a trust, he would not legally be viewed as the owner, so its value could not be taken into account when calculating the value of his assets. The problem is that, despite what the saleswoman says, Local authorities often view trusts as a deliberate attempt to conceal your assets, and they will refuse to recognise the trust. If the saleswoman is not actually from the legitimate legal firm, but a scammer instead, then it is possible that she is from a company that will offer to buy the Major's house from him at way below market value, and then allow him to rent it from them. That way he no longer owns his house. But in that case he would still be sitting on a lump sum, which the local authority would again take into account when assessing his finances. And the scam company would probably increase the rent to a ridiculous amount, so he would soon be out of house and home. And so would Benji the Spaniel. The Major continues to spin out the call in an attempt to find out more about the company, but he doesn't gain much more information from the experience. Where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from a specialist legal company. Right. Uh, we specialise in estate planning. I see. So, is it okay if someone gives you a call and goes through everything with you? Well, I suppose so. I so you just need to take down a few details from you so the consultant knows what kind of information to give you. Just bear with me one minute. Pulling up your details. 
So, what's the first line of your address and postcode, please? Oh, uh, I don't like giving that sort of information out over the telephone. I just need these details so I can book you in, you see. Otherwise, I won't be able to book you in for the consultation. Right. Well, uh, I, d I don't really want to give out that sort of information, I'm afraid. Because otherwise the government will move into my house and, you know, there'll be Boris Johnson swinging his weight around and everything. They wouldn't do that. I mean, we don't pass your details on to any other third party. And I can assure you the government won't be moving into your property. No, well, well I, I, I just don't feel very comfortable about giving that sort of information out, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's fine then. You take care. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Telephone number O eight O O eight O two one six four one called today. I thought that being obstructive like that would stop the company calling me, but the very next day I received a second call from them. Hello. 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 Hi, good morning. It's calling from... Is that Mr. Yes. Hi, Mr. How are you doing at the moment? Uh, I'm all right, thank you. That's good to hear. Um, we're a legal firm. What we do is we specialise in estate planning. And uh, due to the current situation that's happening at the moment, my company is just trying to help as many people as we can by providing free legal advice. This saleswoman mentions free legal advice, but nothing is ever free, particularly where legal matters are concerned. So, how important is it to you that your family inherits everything that you've worked hard for? Well, I've left everything to Benji, my spaniel. Oh, right, wonderful. And have you put a will in place to reflect that? Uh, yes. Yeah, wonderful. Is that all up to date, Mr. Uh, well, it doesn't need any updating. Okay, fantastic. And um, what about making sure that you're looked after as well? Um, have you thought about sort of nominating somebody to be able to make decisions for you if you ever became unable to do that yourself? No, I haven't. Okay. Benji makes all my decisions. Right, okay, fantastic. Have you heard of Lasting Power of Eternity? Yes, I have, yes. What are your thoughts on those? Well, that's a very personal question, young lady. Mm, it's just an opinion. What's your opinion on that? Well, I don't have much of an opinion. The Major clearly isn't interested in talking about it, but the saleswoman seems reluctant to drop the topic. OK. So, have you had you know, advice about all of the options available for yourself? No, I haven't. Okay. Again, the Major has indicated he's not interested, yet the saleswoman carries on regardless. So it's something that we could give you some um, advice on. We're just offering a free telephone consultation. So it's an ideal opportunity to have a chat with our consultant at the time to convenient for you, of course, and just explore all of your options around your particular circumstances. So it is the boat to you. Um, there's no obligation whatsoever, we just give you all the information, simply and straightforwardly, and then you decide which information from there. Does that make sense? Well, the sentence made sense, but I don't see what that has to do with me. The saleswoman ignores the Major's response. Well, if you, as you said yourself, you haven't had full legal advice, so by having all of the options made available to you gives you clarity of what you don't want or what you do want. Well, I don't want to be phoned up. OK. I appreciate that. The saleswoman doesn't really appreciate it. Um, I'd say we're just trying to help as many people as we can to gain all the knowledge. And as you explicitly said, you haven't had all of that knowledge yet. So... Why not have that information? Well, because I don't want it. The Major can't make it any plainer than that. But no is not an answer this saleswoman understands. Right, OK. If you don't want to make sure that you're looked after later on in life, 
Well, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to use stuff from your company. Scam or sharp practice? The hassling tone of the cold calls definitely makes them sharp practice. I didn't talk to anyone higher up that company's food chain to find out any more about them. But there is a possibility that this is a scam as well. These callers are supposedly from a legal firm, but the Solicitor's Regulation Authority prohibits legal firms from making unsolicited approaches to members of the public, which would suggest that these people are not genuinely from a legal firm. As ever, it's important to stay on your guard and leave everything to your pets. Thank you for watching.